Hello and welcome to our video on families of straight lines. Now we're going to look at um, some of the graphs on the following page. Here they are. And I've put three different families on the three different graphs here. The first one is y equals mx where the gradient of the line changes. So m could be one, two, a half, a um, hundred, whatever, but the y-intercept stays the same because there's nothing on the end there. So you would get graphs like y equals 2x, this is y equals a half x, y equals 1x, y equals 2x, y equals 3x, and the family could keep on going, y equals 4x, y equals 5x, things like that. So that's the family of graphs y equals mx. The y-intercept stays at zero, so all of them will go through zero, but they'll have differing gradients depending on what the value of m is. The second graph is the family of graphs y equals 2x plus c. So in this one, the y-intercept changes. It's listed as c, but the gradient will always be 2. So these lines will all be parallel. So this one is 2x plus 1 because it goes through plus 1, 2x plus 2, 2x plus 3, 2x plus 4, 2x plus 5, and it would keep on going if you had more and more. So the family of graph graphs y equals 2x plus c. The third graph that I've got here is a family of graph y equals mx plus 3 and in this one a lot like the first one the gradient changes m but the wind steps the wind step stays the same this time the wind step is plus 3 in the first lot our wind step was 0 but now they're all going to go through plus 3 so we've got again y equals a half x plus 3, y equals a third x plus 3, y equals 1x plus 3, y equals 2x plus 3, and y equals 3x plus 3. They're all going through the plus 3 at the y-intercept there. These variables m and c are called parameters. And they can be really useful to show us a family of graphs when we want to talk about all the graphs that go through that have a uh, y-intercept of zero or all the graphs that have a y-intercept of three or all the graphs that have a gradient of two but we don't want to have to write them all out for example if we had all these ones, y equals 2x plus 2, y equals 2x plus 3, 2x plus 4, 2x plus 5, 2x plus 6, all the way to 2x plus 100. We can represent all of these equations which have the same gradient of 2 but a different y-intercept with the equation y equals 2x plus c and c is the parameter that changes. Parameter is different to the two variables that we're using, x and y. These are the two ones that we are graphing, our x-axis and our y-axis. The parameter changes um, independently of those two variables. Here's some examples of when you might be asked to uh, solve problems using parameters. If you'd like to go ahead um, with these, I will just get you to change that that needs to be a C because there is no M in this equation. And this needs to be a C as well. So sorry about the typo there. Uh, if you'd like to pause and have a go, oh, and that's a comma, of course. If you'd like to pause and have a go at this yourself, you're welcome to do that now. Otherwise, keep watching to see how we use parameters. Okay, some people get a bit worried when they see um, other variables other than x and y in their um, equation. 
but we just treat parameters like normal numbers. So the first example says find the value of C if this line passes through this point. So it's asking us what the y-intercept is um, if it goes through this point. So what we can do is put this in for x and this in for y and rewrite this equation so we get y, oh not y equals, instead of y we'll put 11 equals 2 times x which is 3 plus c, 6 plus c, 11 take 6 is 5, c equals 5. So we found the value of C. Now note if this question had said find the equation of the line if it passes through this point, your final answer would need to write out the full equation, this one here, and put your C value in. So make sure you are clearly reading what the question is asking you and your writing the solution. So this says find the value of C, so we write C equals 5. Question 2. A family of lines has equation negative 2x plus C, where C is a positive number. Find the x-axis intercept in terms of C. So you need to think back to how you would normally find the x-intercept, which would be to make y equals 0. So if we make y equals 0, we get... 0 equals negative 2x plus c. And when it says to give our solution in terms of c, it means your answer will have c in it. Uh, so we're looking for the x-intercept, so we're looking for x equals. So we need to rearrange this so that we get x by itself negative 2x and I'm just going to go over this way you would normally work down the page um, negative c on negative 2 equals x x equals c on 2 or half c either of those is acceptable find the axis intercept x in terms of c, x equals a half c. Done. Question b. For what values of c is the x-intercept less than or equal to 1? So we found the x-intercept is here. x equals a half c. But we want the x intercept which is half c to be less than or equal to 1. So we just need to solve this, it's just solving an inequality. To get rid of this half we can multiply by 2. And there we go. For what values of c is the x-intercept less than or equal to 1? c is less than or equal to 2. Question C, too many C's in this question overall. Find the equation of the line perpendicular to this line at this point. Our first gradient from here is 2. And we know the perpendicular line will be negative 1 over m1, which is 2. So we've now got a gradient and one point, because this just counts as a point. So we can go y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. y1 is c. Uh, m is negative a half. x minus 0. negative half x minus zero y equals negative a half x plus c find the equation this is an equation of a line 
and it's perpendicular to this line at this point. Done. There's our final answer. Thanks for watching the video.